I'm Amanda, the Community Engagement and Media Manager at the Fitton Center. Just like you, I'm at home. Say hi, Moni. The cats kind of love it, but I need something to do. So I thought we could create a project. Here's my thought, fossil dough. All right, ready to make some fossil dough of your very own? Here we go. Chili Joe has your ingredients here. You need one cup of used coffee grounds. So make sure that they are used. You don't want fresh. We're trying to recycle and repurpose and reuse things. Also, mom and dad are going to want their coffee. So make sure they're used coffee grounds. Now, speaking of mom and dad, ask them in the morning if they'll pour you out a half cup of coal of coffee. So that way when you're ready to do it, it's going to be cold. You're going to want one cup of flour and a half cup of salt. So here are my ingredients. I have Epsom salt. This is a different kind of salt. It'll work. Any kind of salt that you have at home is going to be fine. This uh, is like a little bit of a thicker, coarser salt that's used for different things. But all of the salt that I had at home is right there or it's garlic salt. And those just didn't seem like what I needed. So this is uh, my Epsom salt. Now here is some coffee left over from this morning. Remember, you want cold coffee. You also wanna make sure that they pour it before they add any creamers or sugars or anything to it. This is my coffee grounds uh, stash. Mine look kind of soupy. Yours might not look like that. I use something called a French press. So my coffee sits in water and it like soaks it all up. So it's super, super tasty, but it means that they're kind of liquidy and that's okay because we want the mixture to be liquidy. I'm just going to keep that in mind when I'm measuring out how much cold coffee I want because I'm gonna have liquid in here too. So I don't want it to be too wet. And then this is my flour container. So I'm gonna grab my measuring cup. Okay, so I am going to start adding in all of my ingredients. So the first one is one cup of used coffee grounds. So I'm gonna grab my coffee grounds here. And remember, mine are gonna look a little bit soupier than yours most likely, but that's okay. Going to add them into my bowl. All right. That was gross. And now I need a half cup of cold coffee. So here's my cold coffee. And half cup. Okay. Now I need one cup of flour. I'm going to dry this out because it might get a little hard to be measuring things out and pouring the dry ingredients since I just used a wet ingredient. So give me one second. Okay. So now I need one cup of flour. Woo. That is just about a half cup. Well, if that could just be perfect and pour like that the whole time. That would be amazing. A little bit more. A little bit more. Okay. Good enough. I'm going to pour that flour in. I am making a mess left and right. So make sure after you're done with this that you help clean up the kitchen. So that way you can keep doing experiments and crafts and stuff. And your parents aren't like, uh, remember that one time that you made fossil dough and you left my kitchen a mess? All right. And then I have my Epsom salt here. Remember, you can use whatever salt you have on hand. Okay. Add that in. And now we're going to stir. Okay. Get all my extras off. No. Ooh. Okay. It's definitely wet. Um, remember my coffee grounds are pretty wet, so there might be too much moisture. So I have a couple of things I can do. I can add in another dry ingredient. I can let it sit, uh, which will help take that water out, but that's not going to be fun. I want to play with it now. So I'm going to add more flour. Grab that spoon. My niece Maddie makes a lot of slime at home. She loves slime. So I definitely foresee her doing this activity and can't wait for her to tell me. 
how it goes. Her little sister, Ellie, though, she doesn't like being gross and dirty, so I can see her saying, like, ew, ew, gross. It doesn't feel quite as sticky. Look at my hands. They're getting all falsely and dirt covered. Okay. So I'm going to play with it for a little bit. This is a good way to help get the moisture out too, because the moisture is going to start to absorb into your hands and then you'll feel your dough starting to kind of get a little bit more stiff. Look at that. But what's really cool about fossil dough, obviously you've got that really fun smell, but if you look, you also kind of have that fossil dirt look to it. It's not quite like a Play-Doh, it's really wet. Um, I don't know that I would call it a slime either. Uh, I should have asked my niece's opinion because she's like an expert in all things slime and putty. Um, oh, heart. But yeah, pretty cool. So now we can play. So I'm going to bring my dishes over to the sink, clean up a little bit, and then we're going to play with our dough. All right, I've kind of cleaned off my desk space here. This is from a magic trick. Get that out of here. All right, so I've cleaned it off. I've brought back a tray to keep my space safe, thing for my niece, Ellie, and haven't given it to her yet. So I have the perfect thing to play with when we play with this fossil dough. Dinosaur sand mold. Look at that. Perfect. All right, let's open this up. Feed me. Is these like cookie cutters? Because I could. I squish. Tear that apart. Ooh, how do I get that out? Oh, that's a little bone. Guys, I made a fossil. <laughs> or if you want like a real fossily look, you can squish it in your hand and kind of give it some different texture and then make your own fossil in it. So you can go outside and you can find a leaf or a flower, something that you want to push into it, a shell, a snail shell. That would be really cool. Just make sure no snail is living in it at the moment. What can I use that I happen to have? Oh, cool. I have all of these beads. Now, after you have your impressions all done, you can either put it outside and let the sun help it dry, or you can ask mom and dad if they can help you with the oven. And once it seems a little bit more stiff after it sits out, then just put it, pop it in the oven about 375, and then you're gonna want it in there for about 15 minutes until it starts to really dry out all the moisture and harden up. If you do this project or wanna show off the art that you are doing at home, send me an email at amanda at fitandcenter.org. It just might end up in our next video. Checking in on my creations, I had some that sat outside and I had some that went into the oven. This is one of the ones that went into the oven. So you can see that it's pretty dry on the top. Now it was sitting in my little garden out on my balcony. So um, the bottom of it picked up some of the moisture from the dirt, but the rest of it is still pretty hard. And I had one that was just sitting in the sunlight. And so it's been out here drying. So you can see it's darker than the one that was in the oven. So that means it still has a lot of moisture inside of it but it's doing pretty well, I think. It's pretty hard. Um, and the nice thing is I don't see anything that's growing on it, so that's pretty good. The leftover fossil dough, I stored it in an ice cream container that had a screw on lid, and it looks like it's still pretty moist inside. Let me see if I can open it. Okay, and the stuff that's inside of it is still pretty moist, and it's actually maybe a better texture than it was the other day. Like, this is definitely more of a Play-Doh texture than it was. So that's pretty great. Um, definitely means that you can make some more ornaments 
or garden stones for the garden and still get that delicious coffee smell. Mm, mm, mm. All right, well, I hope that you guys had a lot of fun making fossil dough. Make sure that you leave pictures or videos of the things that you create so that we can share them on the Fit and Center page. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Bye. Thank you for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed our creation. Would you consider making a donation to the Fit and Center? Help us keep our content live and our creativity going. You can check it out at fitandcenter.org slash donate to create. Thanks.